I'm here on the CES stage at in Las Vegas. I'm here with Sam Bird, who leads Dell's personal um, computing product group. And really, we're going to take a step back here and talk about just the history of PCs and also where PCs are going. I think it's telling, really, that um, the personal PC group includes not just traditional PCs, but tablets as well. I think that really speaks to one of the things we're getting at, that PCs don't always look, feel, or act like PCs as we know them. Yeah, and I, th I think your, your point's good as you looked at the history, Dana. One of the things we looked at is really defined our business around devices that are personal devices that people use for computing, and they have, they have changed a lot over time. Um, over the holidays, I, I uh, found a few floppy drives that I, or floppy disks that I still had sticking around. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have any computers left that uh, will run the floppy drive, but you look at them today, they're thinner, lighter, more mobile, more powerful than we've ever had before. And we look at those devices as really spanning everything from traditional desktops to notebooks to tablet type devices that uh, customers would want to use. So let's do a little bit of show and tell here. These are sure. both, as these are actually both best of CES finalists. And I should say to the audience too that when we invited Dell to participate today, it was because Dell is a leader in the PC industry. We were not totally aware yet of what Dell was announcing or what its competitors were announcing, but it turns out that Dell had a really stellar lineup at the show and two of your products are finalists for our Best of CES awards. So it would be great if we could show just the, sure. the folks at home um, what you've got here. So the first one I'll show you, Dana, and I really appreciate being with you to here today and, and getting a chance to show these products. Um, the first one is our uh, Venue 8 tablet. So it it has a couple things that are really impressive on it. One that you can see is the screen is absolutely gorgeous. So it has the best screen on any tablet. Um, it is an OLED display, which basically means each individual pixel is being powered on the display. So you get really amazing contrast ratios with the display. So we see a lot of people working with photographs, art, um, creative people, you want to, and like you just take pictures of your kids, take pictures of vacations you're on, you want those to pop and come alive, and the screen looks really awesome and does that. Um, you can see with some of the, we have a nice little picture of Austin on this one, um, of a famous bridge in, in Austin that looks really good. Um, the other thing that's great about this system is uh, the size of the system. So you can see it's the smallest tablet out there um, uh, built by anyone. Tablets have gotten really, really thin. This one hits six, uh, 6.0 It's millimeters. one of the reasons we nominated it, for sure. Yeah, it's pretty impressive. And if you carry it around, you hold it, it's light, extremely easy to use. But it's thin with an awesome screen. And then the other thing that we've done is put uh, four cameras in this product. So there's a front-facing camera on the product. There's also three cameras on the back so that you can capture depth information and stereoscopic images um, with, this, with, this, uh, with this tablet. What that translates to, I remember the first time I, I heard this, I said, geez, 3D, that doesn't sound like, I don't really want to watch a lot of content, 3D content on TVs. Why would we put 3D in tablets? 3D cameras and mobile devices actually used to be pretty gimmicky, but, yeah. but. Yeah. I think coming into a really interesting uh, use. So as you look at what you can do with that 3D information, you can do everything from some pretty cool games where you can start to c control stuff with, uh, with a 3D camera to taking that information that you have in a picture and you can do some things like refocus a picture. So your picture's out of focus with the gallery application that we have on here. Um, you can go in and do some different things like take a picture and literally focus focus on a person that's in the foreground, you could focus on a bridge that's in the, the background. If I do, a, let me see if I can give you a, a quick example of this. Um. And some of our readers will have seen this, let's say, in, in the Lytro camera, but so that's a standalone camera that is not so practical as a standalone product, but as a feature built into an Android tablet, I think it makes a lot more sense. Yeah, and we also see, I think it's a really nice feature that we see, we see people wanting to use that around photos. Um, we see people wanting to use that for just photo editing uh, capability. So imagine you can take a person that's maybe in the foreground of your, uh, of your picture, and then you can change, you can easily, rather than today, you have to use pro programs like Lightroom, and you have to go in and try to select, and make sure I select your hair and every feature. 
You can basically take the background, use the depth information to change that. You can take pictures and you can measure information in pictures. So we had the great analogy like, you know, people who like to go fishing, if uh, everyone tells they caught a bigger fish than they actually caught, with your 3D camera you can go and measure anything in that picture. You can also go shopping, you can go take a picture of a couch, measure the couch, you can see how big that is. I think it also opens up some really exciting stuff where companies are going to be able to write applications and we've talked to some companies doing online sales who are saying, wow, it's pretty powerful. Imagine if you could take a picture of your room, they could show you furniture, rugs, accessories, and you could literally take them from on the web, put them into the picture of your room, and they would size as things are going to be using the depth information in the camera. So it's gone from gimmicky that you talked about to some really nice applications that we're going to be able Absolutely. to see. Absolutely. I mean, I think I read recently that Instagram now has more users, active users, than Twitter, actually. So it's clear that people love their photos, and they love playing around with their photos. And I think people are going to get a lot of use out of a feature like this. And yep. actually, Dell's tablet is the first to have this feature. I mean, what's interesting to me is that covering CES, I've seen real sense cameras all over the place in lots of PCs, but not so many tablets. Maybe this might be the only tablet I've seen on the whole show floor that has real sense, which means you can use it differently than you would, let's say, in a 15 inch laptop or an all in one. I know Dell has put real sense cameras in other form factors as well. Yeah, and the difference uh, the difference, Dana, is also in this in this tablet, it's a world-facing camera, so that lets you do, compared to in some of the laptops and all-in-ones you talked about, where we also have put 3D depth sensing cameras, it's more a user-facing camera. So then you can do things like use your face to log in, you can scan a picture of yourself. There's some pretty interesting applications where you know maybe you want to turn yourself into Superman and you could print your head on Superman. But I think the most interesting applications are when you have a world-facing camera. So doing the things we talked about of being able to measure, you can think about my, my kids and I, we were just skiing over the holidays. They like to think they go off huge jumps. You can take a picture of that. You can measure whether your kid's on a dirt bike, on a ski jump or whatever. You can see how high they are in the air. There's a lot of really neat things. I could send the picture to you. You can go measure it. They can send it to their friends. They can see what they did. It brings alive a lot of very interesting things when you have that camera facing, facing the world and then the pictures you're taking with your, with your tablet. Absolutely. While we still have time, I do want to um, give a show and tell of the XPS 13 laptop. I want folks at home to see just how stunning the screen is. Yeah, we're also really excited, Dana, about our uh, latest XPS 13. So it's our, our fourth generation XPS product. We've always made them really small because we want to have a mobile product. But the thing that really makes this different is um, it's the smallest 13 inch laptop out there. And what we did was basically put a near borderless display into this product. So we did a lot of engineering um, with partners on the display side to basically take the display, be able to wrap it in machined aluminum and a bezel that protects it and it has a, it's just over five millimeters border. So we call it an infinity display. Our customers want really big displays and they don't want to look at a bunch of blank space around the displays. So what you see when you look at the system is basically see all the stuff that you want to see when you're working with your PC. That's one of the, I mean, one of the big reasons we chose it. It's gorgeous, but also the result is a smaller, lighter machine. It's 2.6 pounds, right? Yes, 2.6 pounds. Um, it's about 200 by 300 millimeters, which if you go look out there, that's about the size of most of the 11 inch products out there. So. 11 inch screen gets a little bit small if you really want to try to do a bunch of stuff with your laptop. 13.3 we think is a really nice size and we basically jammed it into a, a really small uh, form factor. You still get a full size keyboard. We put carbon fiber on the palm rest so it not only looks pretty cool, but it also serves a really good function of it dissipates heat great. So when you're sitting typing, it's comfortable, it's soft. You get a nice, you have to get rid of heat in a notebook that this, is this small. It's it's as cool to the touch as we can make it. Yeah. So, a lot of functional design also going into the product. Um, speaking of thinner and lighter notebooks, so the Alienware laptops are thinner and lighter. The 17 is thinner than it used to be. You guys introduced the 15, which is the first time Dell has had a 15-inch gaming laptop in a couple years. Yep. And you guys got rid of, or, get, or getting rid of the bigger Alienware 18, which suggests that um, really what people want 
is maybe thinner and lighter laptops, even in the gaming space, which previously maybe didn't put much stock in that. Yeah, I think people, we, we still see a desire for performance, but I think like you said, we're, we're able to put computing power in places that it hasn't been before, so people want systems that are more mobile. In the case of Alienware, um, we did some pretty interesting stuff, because Alienware customers want to play the biggest, baddest games out there. They want to play them at full resolution. They want to play them at high uh, frame rates. And what we did, we built um, a we built a product called a graphics amplifier. Amplifier, yeah. Yeah, so this, is, this has allowed us to get the system smaller. So rather than build a system where we were sticking two graphics cards in it, which the system becomes huge, mm -hmm. you could almost take it along with you and it could double as a weight so you could work out when you're carrying it along, it was really heavy. You can put the graphics amplifier at home, you get a really mobile system still with really good graphics you can carry around, and then you can stuff in up to a 375 watt graphics card, full desktop, you know, thousand plus dollar graphics card and that graphics amplifier, run the biggest games, plugs into the back of your laptop, you can run it on your 15, 13, 17 inch Alienware. Absolutely, so. if we're talking about uh, computers that don't really look and act or feel like computers of 20 years ago, this is kind of a good example, right? Having a full desktop grade GPU living in its own enclosure on your desk that you just plug in and out of when you feel like it. Yeah, I think it's a huge... It's a form factor no one had heard of back in the 1980s or 90s. Yeah, you're right, like gaming boomed and you look at now being able to do, no one even imagined a couple years ago you would be able to do thin, super high performance systems like that. So it's enabling people, then you have people who used to have to buy a desktop and couldn't go over to their friend's house, now can go do new things with computers, which I, I think that's one of the things that's exciting over the 20 years you described is how as computing's evolved and battery life's increased, front of screen performance is amazing, more mobile form factors. People figure out new ways to use technology that help innovation, productivity continue to advance and keep people happy, so that's pretty cool. Great, so sort of for my last series of questions, I want to look toward the future. Um, Intel has been pretty clear about how it sees the future of PCs. It sees PCs with very few wires, cables, maybe even very few ports, wireless charging, wireless docking. I'm just wondering what you feel are the most compelling aspects of that and what are the challenges of bringing that to consumers? Yeah, so I think uh, we, we certainly hear from customers, one thing that's really important is front of screen performance. So we continue in, to invest in that of best displays in the business. So when people pick up computing device and want to go do work, we want them to be able to see everything from their work to their pictures at high resolution, have a great experience. And I think that's really, really important. Second thing you described, like a world without wires, not having to carry around your power adapter is really, really appealing. There's some things we did in this XPS product, not only is it small, it also has 15 hours of battery life in it. So you start thinking about, you can go on a uh, trip, you know, whether on a vacation or a business trip, take it with you, you got a couple days of battery life that you can work on the planes, work in the office, not have to carry wires with you. Some people will consider leaving it at home, the yeah. charger. Yeah, exactly, and you, so because I, I don't want to carry another charger with me, don't want to ha have to carry other wires with me. Also, we're, we're very keen on same kind of thing you talked about. I think there's a great opportunity with some of the things happen in resonance power charging, um, and some of the industry associations coming together there, getting behind the Alliance for Wireless Power, and we believe that can work on tablets. We see that scaling into PC type devices, so you can think about conference rooms, tables in your house, where you can set your system down and it'll be charging. So wireless docking, charging wirelessly, able to connect. We have technology in here that not only allows you to take um, your screen and pour, put that on a TV or other piece of glass, it allows you to control it with a mouse and a keyboard so you can power your laptop from other devices. We see in addition to this kind of wireless world, a world where you have you know, glass and computing technology all over the place from flat, lay flat displays to displays on the wall and you're able to use your technology in really new ways. So we think all of that, you know, more natural ways of interacting with your PC, not having to carry around a bunch of adapters, having great display performance, all that's really appealing and exciting. I was excited at the Intel press conference yesterday because they listed a whole bunch of partners, different companies, airlines, stores that are going to have wireless charging. So this is really happening. Yes. Um, the docking, it seems a little bit more um, hypothetical. Not hypothetical, but it's just not in the market right now. We haven't seen it so much, the wireless docking. 
Yeah, we're yeah. seeing um, probably less in home. So people, some people use, uh, like we have a Dell cast, you can put a dongle on a display or a TV and you can cast to your, uh, your TV that way. So we see some of our home customers doing that. In the business space, we still see a lot of connected docking, but we're working and have launched and selling quite a bit of uh, Y gig docking. So you can get really high quality bandwidth for video across that docking. So it's been, it's frankly been a little less interesting now because if you have to connect a power cord to your PC, you might as well dock with the cable as well. Because why do I want to plug in power and then I have wireless connectivity to a display? It's like I'm still plugging in. I think it gets, a, I think the technology is there for doing video and other data wirelessly when we get wireless power there, and we're going to work on that, like you said, in working aggressively with Intel and bringing that to life, I think that'll then enable a whole kind of new world, because as soon as you don't need power, then wireless docking looks really appealing because I'm not plugging anything in. In today's world, you have to plug in power, you frankly might as well plug in your dock connector. Well, Sam, we are out of time, and ladies and gentlemen at home, that is the future of PC computing. Sam, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks a lot, Dana, appreciate right. it. Thank you. Yep.